this series of videos I'm trying to introduce some um, fundamental concepts of electronics uh, for anyone that is contemplating or getting into electronics and want to learn more about the subject. I'm not trying to necessarily teach the simple uh, things of electronics such as uh, how a resistor works, how a transistor works. Someone that um, commented on a previous video in this series that it wasn't really for uh, beginners. Uh, well, it is for beginners, um, it's just this is the sort of thing that while you don't need to know in detail, if you're made aware of these things uh, from the start, then you might find that as you come across them, as you encounter them, it's going to make future explanations much more uh, easy to understand. Uh, so, yeah, these, some of these things are fairly complex topics, but I think they're well worth covering fairly early on uh, in your electronics career because they're the sort of thing that can really help. Now, if you are a regular viewer of my videos, you'll know that I very rarely refer to other uh, YouTubers' videos. But I saw one that was posted a short time ago from a very big YouTuber that I kind of took exception to. Um, not because there was anything fundamentally wrong with it, it all the information that he was presenting was technically correct, but he was kind of doing the opposite of what I try and do with my channel. I always try and keep explanations as clear and simple as I can, but he seemed to be deliberately trying to confuse the viewer and uh, I'll leave a, a link to that original video in the description of this video. Um, I'm not going to do a, uh, a direct response to that uh, video. In fact, uh, Dave Jones over at EEV Blog has already done that, as have a number of other YouTube videos, so it'll save me the effort of doing that. And uh, I'll also put a, a link to Dave Jones' video in the description as well, and it's well worth uh, watching both of those videos um, the original video has got a lot of factual, accurate content, but as I say, I take exception to it because it's kind of misleading. And if you look at Dave Jones' uh, video, then um, one of the things he states is that you don't really need to know that uh, information that was posted in the original video. It's not to say you shouldn't know it. It's something that at some point you will need to know if you get heavily into electronics. Um, I designed uh, a lot of RF systems, so I had to get into this sort of thing fairly extensively, but it's not something you need to know from the start, but being aware of it will certainly make explanations a lot easier to understand. And by way of example, I thought I'd um, go back to a comment I made in one of my videos a few months ago. You may recall a video I posted about a Ryden uh, power supply. I made a Ryden supply with a switching back end, which is this one, and I also made one with a linear back end to show the difference in the noise level. So this is the um, one with the switching supply. Currently there's a uh, 56 ohm load, 10 volt set. If I turn this on and you look at the scope, you can see that the noise level stays about the same. The frequency uh, changes because that's how the controller is responding. but Fundamentally, it's um, the noise level staying pretty much the same. As a result of that video, and I demonstrated the difference between this one and the fact that that noise goes away almost entirely with a uh, linear back end rather than the switching back end that is normally fitted to these. As a result of that video, I got a lot of um, questions such as could you put a filter between the switching supply and the Ryden controller. Other people saying, well, it's the Ryden controller, the switching controller, so putting a linear back end is a waste of time. Um, and I'd already demonstrated that's not the case. The noise level was a lot lower. Um, but the interesting question was, um, could you put a filter between the switching supply and the Ryden controller to cut down this noise? Uh, my response was, well, not really, because it's loop noise, it's not, it's not conducted noise, and I didn't really explain in any detail what I meant by that. But if you watch the two videos that I've mentioned, hopefully it will start to become clear as to what's going on here. Um, 
loop noise really has very little to do with what's coming out of the, um, the, the power sockets on front of the power supply. I'll turn off the Ryden so the switching back end is still running but the Ryden's turned off, it's powered down. Notice the noise hasn't really changed. This is coming from the switching back end but it's not conducted, it's not, the scope's not connected to the supply and yet we're getting all this noise. If I disconnect these leads, notice the noise changes but it doesn't go away. And that's not because there is um, really any current flowing out of this, this is powered off. Um, the reason it's doing this is, like I said, it's, it's because of the loop that's formed. Any time you put together an electronic circuit, um, and just to prove this is coming from this and not something else in the lab, I'll turn this off. If I can find the switch, there we go. Notice the noise completely goes away, we've just now got the background. Uh, AC hum. I'll turn this back on and the noise comes back. So it's definitely the Ryden supply that's causing this. Uh, or rather it's the back end, it's not the Ryden part of the supply that's doing this. It's a switching power supply. But it's loop noise. It is because the, um, as I say, when you are, whenever you put together a uh, electronic circuit you inadvertently create uh, what are effectively uh, transmission lines. And as I say, if you look at the two videos in question, hopefully what a transmission line is will become clear. If you want me to post a separate video on what a transmission line is, how it works, uh, how to deal with it, then uh, please leave a comment. But um, the two videos do explain fairly accurately how transmission lines work, so I won't bore you by going back over that. The important thing to bear in mind here is that putting a filter in this isn't going to help because that's not the path the noise is taking. This is really acting as a transmission line, not just these wires but the entire system consists of multiple transmission lines and they are coupling to this transmission line. And you can see if I move this around we get all manner of different responses depending on how I lay these out because we are changing the fundamental coupling for our loop. So we've, we've created a loop here between kind of an inductive loop which is what I said in the original video and that is the same thing we're creating a, uh, a effectively a transmission line between these two systems and where our, that causes inductive coupling between the switching supply and anything else that's in the, um, the, the ether so to speak and it's nothing to do directly with what's coming out in terms of the power. This is turned off. There's no um, power coming out of this. If I turn this on and we do the same thing, notice that we get pretty much the same result. It's not really going to make any difference. So trying to filter this out by putting something internal to the uh, Ryden isn't really going to help. You might find that putting some screening in will help because that will reduce the inductive coupling. But you've still got the issue of the mains cable is forming part of this transmission line, these wires, and if you're not careful, <coughs> the uh, screening you put in can also form part of the transmission line and make things worse unless you uh, implement it in the correct manner. So while you don't need to know the uh, detail, you often don't need to be able to quantify uh, this transmission line business, you don't really need to know that um, electrical energy is not transmitted down the copper. Um, for the most part it's convenient to uh, view things that way and especially when you're learning electronics that's by far the best way to view it and um, ignore what the video says, uh, stick to the uh, basically the way that it's normally taught that the current flowing conductors because it will work 99% uh, of the time. Uh, it's only when you start getting into the detail, high frequencies, that sort of thing, that you really need to know uh, about uh, the fact that that's not how uh, electricity works. Um, so the, the point of this is, when you see noise like this, just bear in mind that this is caused by something that's outside of the conductive path. This has nothing to do with the steady state current when you turn the supply on. This is about the switching noise and remember that um, the switching noise 
doesn't often have much to do with the fundamental frequency of the switching, so it's not the speed or the frequency that the supply is switching at, it's the uh, rate at which the currents are changing in that uh, switching supply. And uh, if you're familiar with the uh, theory of uh, what a square wave is, you'll know that a rapid uh, edge in an uh, uh, electrical system generates some very high impulse energy, and that in turn uh, will give you a uh, noise like this because it is directly uh, emitting a field that is what uh, is impinging on this cable or this system and that's what we are ultimately uh, displaying on the, uh, the scope. So uh, in short this is something that you don't need to be able to uh, calculate most of the time but being aware of it will make uh, it far clearer when I say you know, a filter is not going to help um, hopefully it will help uh, in understanding uh, why we get an effect like this and why just um, a simplistic approach of putting a few capacitors or something within the supply uh, won't actually eliminate it. Uh, I hope some of that made some sense. Uh, if you want me to uh, post the video that goes into much more detail on this topic then um, please leave a comment. Uh, otherwise I hope this has helped to a certain extent and not just made things uh, even murkier.